A lot of people have asked me, actually, there's an episode about water, which I yeah. haven't seen. Mm -hmm. What is that about? Because I haven't yet seen it, but a lot of people, it's like resonated with a lot of people. Yeah, people. it has. I mean, water is such a massive topic and it was so challenging to even do it because the Lourdes episode was the second half of that episode. Mm. So we were talking about the miraculousness of water and I wanted to get into the structuring, the chemistry and the, all of the incredible things, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Paul, uh, uh, Gerald Pollack and the fourth phase of water and all of that stuff. But but we we actually, and these were the producer's ideas. So we had Martin, this uh, guy, this water sommelier. So he brought out all these naturally found waters and these uh, beautiful glass bottles. And we tr tried water from all of these different places. And one's had like 7,000 TDS, total dissolved solids, yeah, and wow. it was all minerals. So how, did, was, how did that taste? Like you're drinking Alka-Seltzer or <laughs> one was like someone just, you know, dissolved in a uh, coin in here. Wow. I mean, and, and, and what we weren't able to really clarify is that's not necessarily what you want to be drinking. Hmm. That's like almost on the side of like every once in a while, maybe this high magnesium water, you can just take a little shot glass, but it's not something. And, and the other thing is, so... So we talked a little bit about, you know, obviously this pH, there's total dissolved solids, there's dissolved uh, oxygen, there's dissolved hydrogen, there's structure of water, there's memory of water, there's tons of stuff, which is why we went to Lourdes to kind of say, hey, there's a lot going on with water. Hmm. And that's kind of our entryway into potentially, I'd love to do like literally pun intended, a deeper dive on on some of that stuff. I actually was just talking to a guy who's um, claimed he's found the most perfect water in Austria and it and it chelates down through the mountains uh, about, it takes about eight years and there's no purification. There's no, it's, it's, there's no, uh, it's all coming directly from the pressure. So there's, it's not touching anything. Wow. And uh, so, so yeah, so the water episode was again, this, this water is not just water. It's got this H2O molecule, but then all of a sudden, okay, you have gas, you have water, you have vapor, well, which is gas, and then you have, it freezes, but then you have this fourth phase. And so we, we, we didn't really get into all of that stuff. We just kind of left it to, hey, didn't you know that there's a lot going on with this, with this water? So, so it started the conversation, but being so light in that information and starting to describe what pH is, starting to describe what total dissolved solids is, because the other side of total dissolved solids, and that just doesn't mean mineral content. Hmm. In this day and age, total dissolved solids also means the fatal conveniences that the pharmaceuticals, hmm. the, the, the inorganic compounds, fluorides, heavy metals, chlorine, all of this, the volatile compounds that interact with the chlorine that make up other, you know, challenging amines for us to deal with. And it's just like, it's a massive thing. So we didn't really get to, but we then in the episode, we went into a water treatment plant in France. And then France, before we went to Lourdes, France is doing a hell of a job getting good quality pure water for everyone hmm. so you can go to any of those fountains and they've gone through you know uv ozone they do use still but very low amounts because you still have to in order for chlorine to kill bacteria that's harmful in pipes you know miles away yeah the, the chlorination of municipal water it's like it's an important yeah. public health yeah even though it might not be good for the individual right like right. the microbiome and everything because yeah. it's a it's an antibiotic essentially sure. mm -hmm. um it's probably important for just like the, yeah the you know societal infrastructure yeah it's a g really good point because you do it's the only way we've been able to have clean water and not kill ourselves mm. by turning on that tap however we do need to take now because of pharmaceuticals because of all these other constituents that get into the water that we do need to unless you have your own aquifer, unless you have your own stream that's been tested and not touched by any anything in this modern world, which is almost impossible, 
um, you have to kind of deconstruct and filter all of that uh, and then reconstruct it again. And so that's adding some electrolytes back in. And then, of course, you can go down the rabbit hole of Schauberger's uh, vortation. There's a, a bunch of uh, spinning water mm. so that it, it vortates and it structures and increases the surface area and tension and, and frequency so that it vibrates so it so it resonates more and and uh, uh, creates that osmotic flow along with the electrolyte so there's a lot I mean it's just like I mean we could sit here for a week and talk about all the intricacies I've been to some of the most intense water conferences in Europe Wow. We're the top scientists on the planet hmm. that we don't know about. I'm sitting there. I literally stood up <laughs> and go, do you realize that no one knows <laughs> any of this research that all of you are spending your entire life on? Yeah, it's and my like, mind. Yeah, it's probably a good <laughs> idea that we create some sort of way to share this. I'm like, but the way they're sharing, I can't follow it. Like, it's so intense I'm like the science behind, I mean, think of it, that they're starting to see science that a droplet of water has more memory space than a room that we're sitting in full of hard drives. That's insane. I don't really know what that means though. Like, so, so, so break that down for me. So basically they realize that water has, it's being influenced. Wow. And it's also delivering information. So they're, they're realizing that it exchanges information all the time, whatever it's up against. And uh, Lou Montier, a French, he's, he actually was one that, that um, he's still alive. Not well, but he's still alive. He, he um, uh, discovered HIV. He was one of the people that discovered HIV. HIV and what he did one of his tests was this is describing some of what water can do mm. so he he put physical DNA in a glass of water okay right next to it he had purified water with nothing in it just the glass next to it not touching not the water was separated just through that association next to it they could then measure the physical imprint of the DNA that had given itself over to the water sitting next to it. Wow. So they could reproduce DNA information that didn't have the physical DNA, but had the electrical frequency and imprint into that water. So then you extrapolate that back. And if water is being influenced by the electromagnetic electromagnetics of the earth it's being influenced by the uv and the radiation from the planet and the electrical conduction of that it's being uh it's it's allowing information and electricity to flow because of the chelation of the minerals and and the the vibration of that so structured water is happening by this battery that's the earth and so that is the normal way that we're supposed to receive that water and receive it into our cells and resonates with our cells. So, so they're just finding that, that information side of things that this has a, it's kind of like if, if we took a hard drive and put it on this table, it doesn't really have a point of view what you put in it, right? but it will take anything that you put in it. So water is like that. Hmm. So that's why the work of Dr. Emoto back in the day was like, if you put love on your glass, it literally creates a structure, the, ge the geometry of love. And if you put hate, it distorts the geometry. There's no uniformity to that frequency. So it goes on and on and on with that. So then we're like, what am I drinking? <laughs> because you can filter water you can do all the macro 3d stuff to it but also there's this other influence to it so anyway it's a big it's amazing yeah it's it's and, and when you're hearing this re this research from these from these doctors you're just like this is this is almost like they're testing something that is, it's quantum so it's 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 
it's instantaneously receiving information. So it reacts in a quantum world. It acts chemically, biologically. So water is kind of the celestial body that as we drink water. Yeah, um, so good. Yeah. So anyway, but but we just <laughs> we, we probably put, you know, we, we just scratch the surface of what water is on the episode. Okay, so should I so I, I have a reverse osmosis water purifier yep. in my kitchen. Uh, should I write the word love on the tank? 100%. 100%. Well, there's no downside. Yeah, there's, there is no downside. If you look at it and you go, oh, cool, love. Not only is it affecting the water in your body, right? 70%. Yeah. Central nervous system, over 90%. Well over that in your blood. So, hey, your water, why not? Um placebo gives you 30 percent anyway so <laughs> yeah, you're right <laughs> yeah. so so why not but but the work of these guys clearly show hmm. that we're absolutely affecting and then you go into dude we could go down a rabbit hole then you go into prayer you go into what are we telling ourselves what are we saying to ourselves hmm. on a daily on a subconscious on a conscious what are we doing are we in judgment? Are we in fear? That is literally quantum, physical, chemical, biologically affecting our water right now, instantaneously. So that just takes it to a whole nother mind blower of like, okay, if in fact this is true and water is influenced by anything, what am I saying, doing, being in myself? Because that will show up physically. Hmm. And it's going to definitely show up with the water imprint and the flow and the nature of the, I mean, it's, I mean, after sitting for 80 hours in research uh, and uh, listening to the guys, I mean, you just walk away going, if you think it's just H2O, then you haven't looked. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. How do you... Where do you get your water from? <laughs> so, so I filter everything coming in. Well, currently, I've my guest house that is currently my house on the property. So I filter everything coming in. So my showers, my hair. So I have big filter, and then I have a vortator. So it structures the water. So all the water coming in. So that's just coming in. Okay. And then I have a RO unit. Um, so then it's going through getting out all the micro, mic, there's microplastics all over the place too. So that's Everywhere. a whole other, you know, uh, endocrine, just annihilator of us men and women and all of that stuff. Hmm. Um, and then, and then I also, uh, run through an on-demand, uh, hydrogen unit. So hmm. high amounts of antioxidants, antioxidant, hydrogen is the number one antioxidant in the world, uh, in the elements. So, so that's kind of it. And then I have all kinds of little structuring devices, <laughs> right? So I have my blue bottle uh, that has love engraved on it. I've got this, uh, which is an incredible company um, because you can just, whatever symbols you want on there, just, and blue is a frequency of a healthy cell. It's a, it's blue is a, it's between, I could get me wrong, but it's between uh, tw 25 and 30 micro volts, volts I believe the, f the frequency of blue hmm. and that's a healthy cell hmm. and so um, so so I love my blue bottle I've got it in the car uh, and then there's a, another company called Flaska that uses cr the crystal in the glass they embed it with frequency generating technology um, so th those are a couple crazy things and then I have some other vortex uh, things and I've got some coming from some vortating uh, uh, machines coming from Austria that were just created. So yeah, just all of that. Um, I, I definitely love to to play with it after. It's so it's 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 a really important thing to as we've discussed deconstruct water so that you can reconstruct it correctly hmm. and add your elements in. You need the physical side of things. You need the electrolytes. That's conduction. That's opening up the cell walls for hydrogen, or excuse me, for water to go in and out of the cell. You need that kind of stuff, and you need that frequency and that 
that structuring side of it as well. Yeah. Speaking of, of electrolytes, do you remineralize your water? I do. hundred percent. What do you like with what? Himalayan salt is the mm. easiest, you know, it's just got, like a, just like a pinch, just a pinch. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to make a sole out of it and make it super intense unless you want to do a colon cleanse. Mm. Like you can easily take a, a liter of water and, uh, put four, uh, two tablespoons Two. I sh probably shouldn't say this because people are just gonna people are gonna it. do it yeah gonna, <laughs> I won't say anything but but just you can colons do colons spilling out all over the place yeah <laughs> I, I do a colon cleanse every once in a while that way reverse hmm. colon cleanse like through this I, there's something about that way of cleansing is feels better to me than well I mean we know that certain minerals like magne you know magnesium mm -hmm. citrate for example yeah. draws water into the gut and right exactly so so the cool thing about Himalayan salt is it's in the, the angstrom size uh, electrolyte that you need. So if you're putting, you know, gives magnesium citrate, it's a molecule that's too big for cells. So the cellular hydration is super important. You don't want to just go heavy on the salt. You don't want to put tablespoons in there and drink that all the time. You just a pinch. And now you have electrical conduction. Again, hmm. it's every cell is is has to resonate and a healthy cell or a healing cell is that point is excuse me 25 millivolts to 35 millivolts and then when you get hurt it jumps up uh to 50 and that because your body kicks in a higher amount of electrical conduction in order to heal but if you don't have electrolytes if you don't have a proper ph balanced system if you don't have you know from the food itself and proper mechanisms then your body has a hard time and then you're in pain if it can't jump up to that kind of amount of millivolts then you're in pain all the time so anyway that's a big discussion but but super important to remineralize the water don't be drinking all the time at all uh distilled water or reverse osmosis you definitely want a pinch of salt or half a teaspoon per gallon Half a teaspoon per gallon. Yeah, just think of it in terms of like, you know, when you put water in your battery, it needs the elements in order for electrical conduction to happen. So so, so we put distilled water in there because it's got the the electrolytes to... Wait, distilled to, water has nothing, right? Or the distilled water has nothing, but yeah. you, you, in order for us to use it for our batteries in our cells, we need to have the electrical conduction mm. or it's going to reach out in the body and grab it from somewhere else and wow. then it's going to create an imbalance so yeah i um i, I definitely re remineral remineralize my water i use a uh it's like drops drops of like different minerals but i mm -hmm. like the himalayan just putting salt in it yeah. it's cheap easy cheap easy 